Doctor, President of Taratak B. Jhansirani, General Secretary of Taratak and uh, All India Office Bearer of the NPRD, Comrade Nambu Rajan, Professor T. M. Deepakji, President of the December 3 Movement, Shri P. Manoharanji, Director of the National Federation of the Blind, all the office bearers of the tar attack on the stage, our senior member Lakshmanaji, and my very dear sisters and brothers, I am so very happy and grateful to you for inviting me to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the founding of your historic organization. I remember that day in February 2010 when representatives from four states came together in Kolkata to form the NPRD. Ten years later, the organization, the platform has grown from four states to 14 states in India. Thousands and thousands of people with disability have gained and benefited from the foundation and work of this platform and organization. You have heard from the General Secretary and from other distinguished speakers who have related to you the different struggles and campaigns which have been successfully fought, the very many demands which you have successfully achieved in the course of these 10 years. But to me, in addition to all the demands, to all the individual struggles, to me, what has been the most historic contribution of your platform and specifically and particularly the work of the Tamil Nadu Tarat Dak is to challenge, is to resist, is to fight against the framework of charity within which people with disability have been viewed in this country. To me, you have challenged the prevailing ideologies which see people with disability as objects of pity. It is not that we are against sympathy. It is not that we are against solidarity with our specific disabilities. But what we object to is an attitude which denies us the right as equal citizens of our country. We have always, from the inception of our organization and the platform, and particularly in Tamil Nadu, we have always held that it is not people who are disabled, it is society, the attitude of society, the attitude of rulers of governments which make us disabled. We have told the rulers of India, we have told those who determine and who influence social norms and behavior, we have told them, stop this attitude, change your policies, we are here as equal citizens of India. We demand dignity. We demand respect. We reject your patronizing charity. That is not what our constitution and our struggles demand. And we say, what are these words you have for us? What are these words of differently abled? What are these words of Divyang? What does it mean? What does Mr. Modi mean 
when he says, oh, I respect, I do puja to all the disabled in the country because we call them divyang. We tell Modiji, Modiji, don't do puja to us. Give us jobs. <laughs> Modiji, don't do puja to us. Give us proper disability allowances. Modiji, don't pity us and don't make us divyangs. We are living human beings. We are those who demand the constitutional right to equality. That is what we want, Modiji. And in particular, as far as the security of women who have a form of disability is concerned, in our society, where atrocities against women are growing. In our society, in our country, according to government statistics, every day there are 93 registered cases of rape against women, including one third against minors. But my dear brothers and sisters, the shame of this government is there are no specific statistical charts about the large number of sexual assault cases against disabled women. I know from my own experience, a large number of cases of rape, sexual harassment go unreported in this country. And therefore, it is essential for the governments at the center and the states to have a much more sensitive mechanism of helping any person who is disabled, who is suffering because of her disability, unable to speak about it sometimes, unable to describe what happened to her. These are the basic issues that we require to be resolved, Mr. Modi and Mr. Amit Shah, the Home Minister of India, who has no idea about the suffering of disabled women. I remember the Krishna Giri case when a young girl from a very, very poor family, a landless agricultural worker's family, when she was brutally attacked and raped, it was Comrade Namburajan and Edwa together. The organization, the platform and Edwa together who took up the case. I also went to meet the police commissioner at the time. And I was shocked to see the way the FIR was written. The way the investigation was done, it seemed that the entire system was so bereft of even one bit of sensitivity to the suffering of a hearing impaired girl who could not even describe what happened to her. Shame on this system which is so insensitive to the suffering of a disabled girl who has faced a sexual crime. So the important work you have done is the work of number one. Firstly, you have changed the whole discussion on disability, transformed it from an issue of charity and welfare to an issue of a right-based movement on the issue of citizenship, on the issue of equality, on the issue of the fight against discrimination. That is an enormous achievement of your platform and your struggle. And the second most important <coughs> contribution of this platform has been the interrogation of government policy. To understand government policy, to identify the gaps and the discrimination in government policy, and along with identifying the gaps the discrimination in government policy. You have also provided an alternative vision. You have also provided an alternative legal framework. 
you have provided an alternative social framework and that my dear friends is a wonderful achievement for an organization which is independently worked without foreign funds without huge amounts of money with determination with commitment and with the one point of savor and struggle for the rights of the disabled and one of the important lessons we have learned from our own experience is the issue of economic independence the issue of the recognition of the ability of a disabled citizen of india to earn their own living to earn their own livelihood that is a critical aspect of our well-being and our rights and we know that in this capitalist society and the economic policies being followed by the modi government specifically the issue of unemployment is one of the biggest issues before the youth of this country and we know that within the youth there are sc youth there are st youth there are youth who have disabilities who face the greatest discrimination and therefore today it is very very important that the issue of reservations the issue of the rights of the disabled along with scs and sts to have reservation not only in the government sector but also in the private sector is a very critical issue in our struggle for equality now you just think about it out of every 100 people of working age among the disabled who can get employment if a proper affirmative action was taken only 34 have got jobs and if you look at all the schemes of the government to give employment you will be shocked to know my dear friends that there is no segregated data as to how many disabled people have got employment you think about this so many schemes every day modi ji is saying look at the schemes i have got the employment prime minister's employment generation program deen dayal upadhyay gramin kaushalya scheme housing and urban poverty alleviation scheme self employment program employment through skills training program so many schemes but when you ask modi ji modi ji all these schemes are there but can you tell us how many people with disability have got a single job or loans under these schemes you can look through every government site but you will not find a single data or statistic to tell us what it is they are covering up their utter failure to provide us with equal opportunity in these schemes after so much struggle and sacrifice and the platform had five mobilizations in delhi to ensure the passage of the people with disabilities the act for them but today we find in so many parts of the country there is no proper implementation of the act and here in tamil nadu itself we find that the rules which are to be framed for the act have got so many problems with it that instead of adding to the rights they are subtracting from those rights therefore the demand to implement a 4% reservation for employment for those with disability the demand to extend the reservation to the private sector the demand to ensure that the rules for the implementation of the act in tamil nadu along with your charter of demands are going to be the way forward to take our struggles forward and we can do that with our struggle with our organization and most importantly with united struggles of all sections of those who suffer different types of disability and in that i must say and i must congratulate the tamil nadu tarata for what 
all over the country we find that instead of coming together, we have found in many places that different sections of the people who have disability are fighting their own battles. Those who have hearing impaired, they are fighting their battle. Those with other types of impairment or disabilities are separately fighting their battles. And that weakens the movement. But here, my dear friends, in Tamil Nadu, you have created a platform which has brought all sections of those who are affected with any kind of disability on a common platform and that is actually the way forward. I have seen the growth of your organization. Today, because of your hard work, you have established 36 committees in 36 districts district committees. You have units in over 250 taluks. You have more than 1,800 branch unit committees. This is a matter of great pride. And I believe that it is your hard work, it is your sacrifice which is taking forward the struggles of disabled people for dignity, for equality, and for equal rights. I again congratulate you. I congratulate all your office bearers, your leadership, and all of you as members of this great organization. And I'm sure that 10 years down the line, you will be not only an example in India, but all over the world, people will quote your experience as the best example of the struggle for the disabled for equal rights. I thank you very much. And once again, my warmest greetings for your many, many achievements in the last 10 years. Thank you. And I thank Sri Sundar for the sign interpretation and Professor Chandra for her wonderful translation. Thank you.